Welcome to the HCI Family of Podcasts, where your source for personal, professional, and organizational growth and development. We share our own original research, explore industry trends, and interview executives and thought leaders from across the globe. Join us for practitioner-oriented content around all things leadership, HR, talent management, organizational development, and change management. Maximize your personal and organizational potential with the HCI family of podcasts. Aaron Markham, welcome to the conversation today. Good to be here, John. Uh, A pleasure. Excited to dive deep into entrepreneurial thriving. Wonderful. It's a pleasure to be with you. You're joining us from Idaho. I'm south of Salt Lake City in Utah. And today we're going to be talking about positive psychology and how we can go about eliminating unhealthy stress, flourishing personally, and creating the good life. And like you said, from an entrepreneurial lens is how we'll be taking this. As we get started, I wanted to share Aaron's bio with everybody. Aaron Markham holds a Master of Applied Positive Psychology from the University of Pennsylvania. And for 20 years, he successfully scaled businesses and is a recipient of top industry awards, recognizing his leadership, vision, and service. He has been a sought-after national speaker since 2006 and enjoys empowering entrepreneurs to make positive changes in their personal and professional lives. His new book, Entree Thrive, The Entrepreneur's Eight Laws for Eliminating Unhealthy Stress, Flourishing Personally, and Creating the Good Life, February 21st, yeah. right around the corner. That's fantastic. Yeah. Um, so look for that. Now, Aaron, anything else you would like to highlight by way of your background or personal context before we dive on in? Yeah, yeah. So the book, it's really kind of positive psychology meets entrepreneurship. But honestly, the principles in the book apply to to everybody, right? It's yeah. it's uh, it's well being. It's it's kind of the the code to to thriving. I think in so many different ways. We actually just recently updated the subtitle to say it it, it says um, accelerate your your financial freedom while creating the good life because mm. we want people to understand that that yeah you can re- even money freedom relationship freedom all those things um, kind of come together when we're focused on our own personal well being and so my my background I've been an entrepreneur for twenty two years uh, in the home care space. I started my first company in 2002. And through all my entrepreneurial journey, there are times I was flourishing and many times I wasn't. And for the most part, between 2002 and 2016 or 2015, rather, I had more of probably the non-flourishing side, financially doing Mm. well, right? I was financially flourishing, especially later on between 2012 and 2015. But I was obsessively passionate about what I was doing in an unhealthy way. Mm. I was living what was called a lie of the either or. I felt like I I could either flourish personally or I could flourish professionally. And as an entrepreneur, we usually pick the professional side and go all in thinking our personal side is going to catch up. Well, fast forward, I, I, I figured some things out. And in 2016, went all in on investing in myself and my own personal well-being, and also investing in in, in leadership and uh, really growing my company. I had a uh, uh, satisfaction management performance benchmarking company in the in-home care space at that point, a real game changer in the industry. I mean, we really changed the course of the home care industry with that company. But when I started letting go and focusing on my own flourishing the, it was kind of this hockey stick growth in the company. Mm. And it really, it was amazing. And then later on decided I was so fascinated by why some entrepreneurs flourish and why some don't that I wanted to know the science behind it. And that's what positive psychology is. It's the science of well-being. Why do some people thrive and why do some people don't? It's the proactive side of psychology rather than the reactive side. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's uh, so I studied under Dr. Uh, Martin Seligman, who's the father of positive psychology. He was a professor of mine, very, very well known psychologist, wrote the book Flourish. And that program, I, I entered it, I started it in 2021 during COVID. And, uh, and so it was, it was transformational for me. I didn't 
go into it that I was going to write a book and, and do all right. that. But after I finished the program and I had really gone all in on the entrepreneurial side of flourishing and thriving that I thought, man, this would make a great book. I, I wrote my capstone on it and then just got kind of set up with a publisher and he loved what I was doing or, or where I was going with it. And we partnered on it and it's been about 14 months in the making coming out here this next week. And by the time your listeners hear this, most likely it's, it's out. So yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah. So thank that's the background. It. That's the short version. I guess. Yeah. Well, thank you for the background. And I like how you said a little bit ago, um, this either or mentality that I yeah. think is really common. I think a lot of people have that. And of course we talk about work-life balance, work-life integration. It's something that gets yeah. talked about a lot uh, yeah. and for good reason. But I think a lot of people, probably most people, um, tend to get stuck in this either or kind of mentality and tend to kind of go all in one direction or another. And it really can be a mix and they can mutually reinforce each other. Yeah. They can (laughs) align. Yeah. Yeah. When, when, when you, when you take care of yourself uh, and when you flourish personally uh, and with your, your close relationships uh, it just opens the door for all sorts of other great things to happen. Uh, And sometimes that equals financial success. Sometimes it doesn't, you know, there's always risk in entrepreneurship. There's always risk in anything, but, but what I found in my own life is, is similar to what you found is usually what, when I am in a healthy place, dealing with stress, anxiety, flourishing personally, other aspects of my life take off and it's usually exponential. (laughs) And so it, it, and, and then it almost becomes, it's like, how do you get stuck in this trap of like, uh, it, it, flourishing helps so much in so many ways. And then yet we get drawn back into it. It's so easy to get drawn back into like the self-absorption absorption, and, and focusing so much on like work, for example, um, that it, it it's ironic that all of a sudden you're not being successful. All of a sudden you're not having yeah. the types of growth that you could otherwise have. Um, yeah. Anyways, it's, it's a good reminder, I think, to all of yeah. us that that this kind of balance is really important. Yeah. Yeah. And I, you know, and I've been kind of dropping even the word balance and saying, you know, at sometimes in your life, you have to go more all in on your personal well-being, and sometimes on your yeah. professional, like when you start a new company or you start a new job, you're a little bit more all in professionally, right? You've got, it, it's kind of that, but understanding your boundaries is really, really important. Yes. Yes. And not letting some of that personal flourishing side of your life go. I talk about in the book, the importance of vigor and energy. And uh, one of the laws is what I call entrepreneurial vigor. And it's, it's all about mind and body alignment, right? Mm-hmm. And, and really getting clear on that and making sure that we don't sacrifice our minds and bodies uh, in the effort to um, thrive uh, professionally, you know, because we can get pulled in professionally and it, it can be exhausting if we're, if we're placating to other people, we're not really looking after ourselves. We're saying yes to everything. I mean, all those yeah. things that can happen in our professional lives kind of, um, can just spiral out of control when we're, when we don't have those kind of boundaries in place. Yeah, and when I yeah, started well, setting boundaries in 2016, I, I got into cycling and um, that was the mm-hmm. sport. I decided to go all in with that. You're probably familiar with the um, Lodija, the Logan to Utah 200 mile bike race. I've done that four times now. And that was my like going, you know, creating those boundaries and going all in with something else as well while I was still taking care of my business. Yeah. But I had to put boundaries in place because training's intense for that, so that I could block out those periods of time and 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 kind of have that white space, right? We all need a little bit of that white space. If we overschedule our weeks and our days, then our professional life can really take over, and we are. It's just it just leads to not only burnout. I burnout I think is can be overused a little bit. A burnout isn't all about just the hours that you're putting in. Burnout is that you're doing something that you, that you really don't love to do in the first place, you know, and that um, anyway, that's a whole other topic, but that's. Uh, yeah, excellent. Yeah. And, and just as a side note, it's been a hot minute, but uh, I I did, I, I probably did three or four um, 200 mile bike races 
myself, but it's been a really? couple of decades. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, good um, for you. Oh, so th that great. is something that has has faded. You know, maybe I need uh -huh. to to uh, to set some boundaries and and retake that up. I don't know, but but yeah, there, there's something powerful about whether it's you know biking or running yeah. or whatever your thing is. Like just making sure that you take the time to to cultivate a healthy body mind connection and like all that stuff. It just leads to right. lots of other great things. So wonderful. Right. Now we've kind of talked about it implicitly but let's make it really explicit you know what's the connection in your mind from you know this po positive psychology approach and why is it so important for entrepreneurs yeah so uh, you know in quoting aristotle you know he called the, it's not really a quote but it's a term that he used quite a bit the good life you know yeah. it's in the title it's in the subtitle of my book and the good life for aristotle was the complete life and the complete life was like more of a virtuous life, uh, leaning into our character strengths, another positive psychology term. And I talk about these character strengths in my book is that when we are leaning into our character strengths, leaning into that good life, um, we're making the impact. Um, you can call it your calling. If you feel called to do something, then your, your well-being is enhanced. Like when we're really doing the things that we love to do, whether it's professionally or personally. And for the entrepreneur, when they have the responsibilities of taking care of, of other families, um, yeah. the pressure of launching a product, all of these different things can be a distraction from the good life. And when they lose sight of that good life and they're in their business constantly, and I mentioned overscheduling is a big issue for a lot of entrepreneurs and they don't create that white space, what I call the creative space. Like if they're not mm -hmm. taking time to create um, and get clear on what they want out of their business and they're constantly at the whim of everybody else, mm -hmm. they're not flourishing, they're not happy. And then their business is suffering. Like they don't even recognize it. Their business is plateauing often because of them. They're getting in the way. And that's, that's why it's so important um, for an entrepreneur to take care of themselves, because if they don't, it impacts not only them, but all the people they employ, their family. I often um, get quoted as saying that, that entrepreneurs make the world go round. You know, they are the core, 66% of our GDP is made up of small business entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's vital that they're taking care of themselves in so many ways. And I have eight laws in the book that I go through each one of them and how they tie to the good life and also how they tie to their own What Dan Sullivan. He's my coach. I don't know if you're familiar with Dan Sullivan, strategic mm -hmm. coach, but he, he often talks about the four freedoms and that's the freedom of time, money, relationships, and purpose. And when an entrepreneur, anyone for that matter, is obtaining those four freedoms in their life. Not only are they flourishing themselves, but the people around them, it's contagious, right? Are flourishing and, and tend to um, take off from that. Positive cultures come from the entrepreneur investing in the good life for themselves. You know, so they show up negative at work. That's going to impact how the workplace is going to feel and how people are yeah. going to respond. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The white noise element that you've mentioned a few times now, I think is so important, you know, whether it's just time to quiet your mind, do mental yeah. reset, you know, spend some time doing some meditation or, or anything that can, can allow you to calm your mind is, is important. What that does is it, it really does allow you to have the time to do creative things, innovative things, yeah. strategic things. And we, we get so wrapped up in like the grind of just meeting after meeting and putting out fires and, and just all the demands that any leader faces, like the weight on their shoulders of just trying to keep things running and going, it's yeah. it's hard to sometimes block out that time and to prioritize yeah. it. And it's yeah. it's why so many leaders find themselves on this hamster wheel of just grinding. And and they then you get just you just feel stuck. Like you can't make progress because mm -hmm. you're just being truly fully reactionary rather than proactive. Uh and that's you know, it it yeah that's one of the quickest surefire ways to get someone to burn out <laughs> is when, yeah, when yeah. you're stuck in that kind of a process. So setting aside, having boundaries and setting aside and scheduling some of those white spaces 
um, unscheduled time is is really really important. Uh, so I just wanted to reemphasize that. Um, let's go yeah. into your eight um, laws or eight pillars. Uh, for the good life, because I think that'll be super helpful. Oh, yeah. one other quick thing I just wanted to yeah. mention is, yeah. you know, you're framing this around entrepreneurship, which uh, is important. Um, as you mentioned at the beginning of our conversation, it really applies to anybody, right? Uh, and so I hope anyone listening today um, or watching this, you know, will see themselves in what we're talking about. Uh, yeah. And I often think about the entrepreneurial drive, the entrepreneurial spirit. Not everyone is starting a business, in the kind of traditional entrepreneurial sense, but I know a lot of people who are very entrepreneurial in yeah. what they do. Um, yeah. Yeah. They can be in a big corporation and they're very entrepreneurial, um, yeah. doing initiatives and programs and like and creating new things. And um, I think that- A lot mindset, of entrepreneurs, right? Yes, yeah. absolutely. And so I think that mindset is really important to cultivate. Yeah. Uh, and regardless of whether you're starting your own small business or you're embedded within a larger organization trying to do cool new things, uh, or whatever, like, I think these principles apply. Um, and it's, it's Absolutely. important uh, for us to, to consider how we can um, flourish in the ways you're describing. And that will lead to better, not only personal fulfillment and success, but in your relationships, in your work and everything that you're doing. Yeah. Yeah, it really does. And, and, and so, yeah, these eight laws, as you hear them, you can apply them. I have a, my oldest uh, has a master's degree in HR and we've talked about these laws and there are some of these principles and they certainly apply to his work, you know, and what he's doing, especially the impact he's having on other people. So actually Utah state. So he's a, he's an, that's where he got his master's degree in HR over there. But so the first law is clarity. I call it on entre clarity or entrepreneurial clarity, but again, it applies to anybody. And the first part of that law is what we call guiding truths. And I have guiding truths. I've had them for many years, but they're my personal guiding truths. They're not core values. Like you'd see in a company, although they should drive core values, especially if it's your company, but the guiding truths are what really what I want to be true about myself and experience about myself. So for example, one of them's my mind is at peace. My actions reflect character. My family receives of my time. Those are three guiding truths that I have right there. And I establish those and we have a whole, um, in fact, the tool, if your lis listeners go to entrethrive.com forward slash human performance, they can download a guide that helps them get to their, their guiding truths. And so that's the first one. And we have other, other tools. We have a breakaway tool. It's a biking term, but, you know, leaning into their future selves or distancing themselves from where they are today to where they want to be and who they want to help them get there. And we have this whole tool that helps them identify their next breakaway, kind of a really cool term in concept. And the second law, so we've got entre clarity, getting clear on what they want is really important. And then the second one is create or entre create. And the reason it's the second one is that we've got to lean into our creativity. And I talked about that white space, but I, I, I use the term deep thrive sessions. That's what I've mm. been using that term for a while. This is when I go all in Friday mornings, totally. My Fridays are completely blocked out. I don't typically have appointments on Friday, very rare dental appointment on occasion, you know, but I try to keep my Fridays blocked out so I can have kind of that all in deep thrive. Now I know that's not reasonable for some, but if you had a one hour in the morning where you blocked out and you meditated, journaled, and then started creating something, whether it's personal or professional, you know, and then started using that, your creativity, whether it's to solve a problem in your work or to plan a trip and get creative about that trip, whatever it is, you're using the, your creative juices. I'll go through that whole process in that, in that law. The third one is entre grit and grit is all about your staying power. your as an entrepreneur or as a professional. And the further you get along what I call the, the levels of grit, which are curiosity, interest, practice which is the third level which a lot of people want to skip but you can't skip practice the fourth level is passion the fifth level is calling and the further you get on these levels the more staying power you have 
And a lot of people don't realize that the calling phase is that's the phase where you're serving others. What is the impact I'm going to have on other people, not just myself? Passion is more about what am I passionate about? What do I want? Both are important. But again, I go through all those phases in that. And then the fourth law, no surprise, our relationships are what I call entre connections. You know, the Good Life book that came out last year talks about this longest Harvard study, you know. Um, relationships are important. And there's three elements of that congruency, being present, and every day having what um, Jane Dutton, the organizational psychologist, calls high quality connections. Mm. Like these little high quality connections. I go more into that. The fifth law is faith. So, entre faith. And this is faith in yourself, faith in others, and giving people your trust rather than waiting uh, for them to earn it. Something that, uh, I think is becoming more and more important that we give people our trust and our faith. And the third level of, of entre faith is faith in a higher power, faith in God. And science has shown that our well-being is enhanced when we have that faith in a higher power. The sixth law is habits or entre habits. And those entre habits, I mentioned character strengths. What if you could have your character strengths working unconsciously in the background and you created them as habits. And I just go through the process. Um, the, the great psychologist, Wendy Wood, she wrote the good habits, bad habits. She, she talks about the 43%, 43, 43%, excuse me, of our habits, the things that we do on a daily basis happen unconsciously. Mm-hmm. What if we could have these character strengths working unconsciously? And so I go through all that. It's a really powerful concept, I believe. And then the seventh law is vigor or entre vigor. And that's that mind and body alignment, like getting our minds in control of our bodies so that we exercise on a regular basis. And I was on a podcast recently and the, um, the host asked the question, um, would you rather make your decisions based upon knowledge or based upon emotion, right? The knowledge is our mind and the emotions, our body. So if our mind controls, then we'll make decisions based upon what we know. And the knowledge we know, like this, this is the impact this will have. Anyway, it's a, it's a really powerful concept, but mind and body alignment. I, I quote some of Joe Dispenza's work. He, he talks a lot about that. And then the last law, which I call the keystone law is entre agency or entrepreneurial agency. And this law applies to everybody, like, just like all mm-hmm. the laws, but this one in particular yeah is that we all need to use our imagination. We all need to be optimistic. We all need to choose those things. And if those things are taken away at the workplace, the autonomy that we need um, as individuals, if that's taken away, our agency is taken away in that sense. And so as entrepreneurs, making sure that we're creating environments where that's where we're empowering and we're creating autonomy in the workplace and so forth is super important. If you're in an HR role, think about that. And as far as that goes, is that it's the autonomy that you're creating in your department, whatever that might be. And, uh, and that agency also is all about making sure we're taking ownership, not blaming others, you know? And so I go through all that through that law, but those are the eight laws. They kind of culminate the good life for the entrepreneur in this book. But again, it's, uh, it's for, you know, they really apply to anyone and all. So, yeah. And ultimately culminating in that good life. I mean, what, what a great concept generally, like I, who doesn't want to live the good life? Who doesn't want to live a life of meaning, purpose, fulfillment of giving back, helping others, finding success, et cetera, like that. So, so these laws I think are wonderful um, you know, pillars of, of that success. Uh, I really appreciate you walking us through that. Yeah. Now, Aaron, I note the time I need to let you go here in just a minute, but before we wrap things up for today, I wanted to give you a chance to share with the audience, how they can connect with you, find out more about your work, and then give us a final word on the topic for today. Yeah. So entrethrive.com. So E N T R E T H R I V E.com. They can order the book there as well. That links to Amazon. And then get some free tools there. I mentioned entrethrive.com forward slash human performance, which is the unique URL for your listeners. So they can download that what's called the entre clarity guide. And so that's the best way. There's a contact 
page there um, that your listeners can connect to and connect with us. But I would say when it comes to the good life is that the first law that, you know, you have to start somewhere. And I use this concept. I love the quote um, from Martin Luther King, and it's a great concept and how I wrote my book. It goes like this. If you can't fly, then run. If you can't run, then walk. If you can't walk, then crawl. But whatever you do, keep moving forward. And so start with clarity, like get clear on what you want. That's the crawl part of the good life. What do you want? And don't apologize for what you want. Uh, Dan Sullivan has taught me that is don't apologize for wanting what you want and get clear on what that is. And once you're clear, set boundaries around that and, and get rid of all those things that don't support what you want out of your life that are pulling you away from what you want and, and really away from your own good life. So anyway, I just leave that, that thought Perfect. there. Yeah. Thank you so much, Aaron. This has just been a pleasure. I encourage the audience to reach out, get connected, find out more about what Aaron can do for you. Check out the book. And as always, I hope everyone can stay healthy and safe, that you can find meaning and purpose at work each and every day. And I hope you all have a great week. Thanks for joining us for this episode of the podcast. We hope you stay healthy and safe and please join us again soon.